Welcome to the Hospital Finance Podcast, your go-to source for information and insights that can help you stay ahead of the challenges impacting healthcare finance. And now, the host of the Hospital Finance Podcast, Michael Passanate. Hi, this is Mike Passanate, and welcome back to the Hospital Finance Podcast. Today, I'm joined by Dana Aylward, who is a senior consultant in our reimbursement team here at Bessler. And Dana is going to talk to us about the rights a provider has after your cost report has been settled. Dana, welcome to the program. Welcome. Thank you. So Dana, first, why don't you talk uh, to us about what the notice of program reimbursement is? Because that's a pretty key term for for what we're going to be talking about on the podcast here today. Right. So the the notice of program reimbursement, or also known as the NPR, is the final audited Medicare cost report. The NPR is supposed to be issued one year or longer after the Medicare cost report has been filed and accepted. The desk review, or also known as the audit, may take months to complete while others may move more quickly. And what are some of the benefits of reviewing that NPR? Well, the NPR will impact the provider's settlement and payment rates. Since NPRs may be issued at the most inopportune times, such as the cost report preparation, year-end, or other various pressing responsibilities, the provider may not have the ability to review the results. When hospitals go through desk review, the audit can be, process can be grueling. Often negative issues may arise where the hospital does not fully agree with the outcome. If timing is an issue or if an item may be under dispute, the NPR can still be issued. In other cases, there may not be an intensive audit, and the cost report will be finalized with positive or neutral results. In either scenario, the hospital has rights to appeal or reopen their cost report. So can anything else be done once the NPR has, has been issued? What's the, what are the rights that a provider has? Well, yes, the provider does have the right to appeal. While we must now include intended appealable items on the original submitted cost report, or commonly referred to as the as filed, there may be other issues that arise. We may find unintentional mistakes made by a Medicare auditor, which may have substantial financial impact on the hospital. There can be input errors in DISH, IME, and GME, or other reimbursable areas where the settlement was improper. These areas or errors may be minuscule, while others may be over $100,000. It is not common to find these types of errors. However, the the provider must be cognizant of any open cost reports as it may affect future reimbursement. If a prior year is still open, the provider should evaluate any financial implications. Personally, I have seen medical education FTE FTE issues that affect future years in IME and GME payments, or in cost reporting terms, this would be prior and penultimate year FTEs. Okay, and is it worth pursuing issues with the PRRB? Absolutely. While many of our clients appealed popular topics such as Bay State or Alina, we have also represented providers for smaller or less common issues. There is a risk with an appeal in settlements, which they may take years or decades to occur, such as the SSI remand Bay State cases. Some of the settlements go as far back as the 1990s, which is a whole podcast on its own. While these issues today have had positive outcomes and continue to circulate to district courts, there are some decisions, however, that can negatively affect our appeals and end up being dismissed or withdrawn. Without pursuing these issues, there would never have been highly successful cases such as budget neutrality or Alina. And what if a provider has an appealable item? Well, if the provider does have an issue to appeal, the the provider or provider representative must submit the required documents to the Provider Reimbursement Review Board within 180 days of the NPR, which is essentially six months. Depending on the nature of the appeal, the issue may either be filed into an individual appeal or group appeal. For the appeal or appeals, they must be filed on forms issued by the PRB. For individual appeals, you have Model Form A, which is an individual appeal which may include multiple issues under one provider number. If the provider forgot to include an issue, they may file a model form C after model form A to add any additional issues they may have forgotten prior, beforehand. For group appeals, you would use model form D, which you would take the individual appeal issue and transfer it into a group. The group may be either a mandatory or chirp group, which are, manda- are related parties, or you may file it under an optional group, which is for hospitals that are unrelated to one another. Lastly, you also have Model Form E, 
where the provider may add an issue directly into a group appeal from the MPR. This must be within 180 days of the MPR, and it does not satisfy the 180-day window for additional issues. I would recommend using this form if the provider is certain on their issues. And Dana, should a provider file an appeal or a reopening? After the MPR has been issued, the provider may have the opportunity to appeal a decision or determination made during audit. There may be other issues that are beyond the scope of a cost report, such as challenges to regulations, CMS methodology, where the provider may wish to pursue an appeal. Providers have the ability to file appeals if the items were included on the protested line at the time of initial submission. If the hospital did not meet the requirements, then the issue will eventually be dismissed. While some findings may warrant a reopening, file an appeal is used to protect their rights. If a reopening request is denied, an appeal can accomplish the same results. An appeal, however, can be costly and time consuming. So I'm a provider and I've filed an appeal. Now what? Once an appeal is acknowledged by the Provider Reimbursement Review Board, the PRB will assign a case number and due dates. It is critical to maintain all due dates and details of the appeal. If any dates or documents are missed, the PRB will dismiss the case. Typically, the PRB will assign the first round of due dates about six months in advance. This allows the provider to determine a strategy or next step. And Dana, this, these appeals are such an important issue to the provider community today. And we thank you for stopping by and talking about the rights that providers have after they file their cost report. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you very much for having me. This concludes today's episode of the Hospital Finance Podcast. For show notes and additional resources to help you protect and enhance revenue at your hospital, visit Bessler.com forward slash podcasts. The Hospital Finance Podcast is a production of Bessler. Smart about revenue, tenacious about results.